Welcome to Grateful and Full of Greatness. I'm your host, Mark Lassini. In this podcast, I will sit down with guests who, in my opinion, live their life with the pursuit of greatness in mind. And this platform allows me to discuss and to explain strategies that go into peak performance. This is episode number one. My guest, Brian Callanan. To me, it's Coach Callanan. He's been involved in the sport of lacrosse for decades. He served in the United States Marine Corps and had a 30-year law enforcement career, including assignments in homicide, narcotics, and major crimes. He has lived a life chasing greatness in all the areas he's passionate in. He's a man of high character, with a strong love for his family and close relationships, and has an endless passion for cause greater than self. I'm extremely grateful for him, as he helped put a lacrosse stick in my hand roughly 15 years ago, and also taught me how to carry myself. A big reason why he's my first guest is because he was there to see me when I started lacrosse, and he was a catalyst for what I do now as a professional lacrosse player, certified fitness trainer, nutritionist, mental coach, and peak performance specialist. You will learn more about him throughout this podcast. Without any further ado, Coach, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure to be here, Mark. It's actually an honor. Thank you. (laughs) So we go way back, Coach, and I got a bunch of questions that I want to ask you through it. Um, It'll start off a lot more formal with these questions, but I'm sure we'll riff from there. Uh, So where did it all start for you? Your love for lacrosse, your love for service, uh, and cause greater than self. Take us back. It it all started. I mean, I grew up in in the Bronx where uh, lacrosse wasn't uh, a sport we played, and I wasn't exposed to the game itself. Uh, until I was in, in the Marines and, and actually was out uh, on a training run at Camp Lejeune one day and saw um, a bunch of officers practicing um, lacrosse. And I finished my workout and I kind of just stood there and one of them pulled me over and said, uh, you know, you play? And I, and I said, I, have no, I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> and, uh, and they decided to teach me how to play. I love that. And I, I think uh, that's the craziest thing about the sport of lacrosse, because if some guy's playing wall ball, you want to find out where he's, where he's from, where he plays. But if they're playing basketball, you don't usually stop a guy from going and play basketball and hoops, because it's more, uh, I guess, uh, pervasive throughout the United States, at least. Yeah, and, and my background was in basketball um, and, and had, had played at a pretty high level in high school and and, and was actually playing on the All-Marine basketball team at the time. Uh, so when I saw them practicing, I was, I was hooked before I even held a stick. I love that. And uh, that takes me to my second question. What were, besides this man who introduced lacrosse to you, uh, go even further back, what were some major influences in your life um, from the start? Well, growing up, uh, the son of uh, immigrant parents uh, in the Bronx, um, you know, we were uh, pretty pretty low on the economic ladder at the time and and I just watched my father and and my mother um, work really hard to raise their kids and and to instill in us um, the characteristics and the traits that 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 would lead us to success greater than theirs were they very much alike your your mother and father Uh, um, they were um, my dad um, um, was 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 a tough man and and I think that's the part the physical toughness but also the mental toughness because he endured a little bit of of uh, of discrimination being an, sure. an immigrant and sure. and to watch him battle through it and and never give up and 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 to keep working hard in spite of people uh who wanted him to fail or didn't help him uh I think that was my first exposure to to that desire to succeed yeah. was watching him. So the lacrosse came about when you were already serving. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, it was it, it wasn't something. You know, I can't sit here and say you know oh you know I had the lacrosse stick in my hand at the age of three sure. and you know um, and actually they didn't let me actually do anything on the offensive end. They made me a D midi. Sure. And they wouldn't let me. Do anything else? Those D-Mitties, those D-Mitties, <laughs> uh, they got to get thrown into a box. But I guess a good segue to talk about when how I started. I, in the introduction, I said that uh, Coach Callanan, he actually was the first guy to put the stick in my hand. I was a fifth grader um, from Mawa in New Jersey, all the way North Jersey. Uh, and he was the one who introduced me to the game. Uh, coach, do you believe that mentors, coaches, trainers, 
uh, are necessary for one's growth and success. I, I think it's a, it's a it's an extremely extremely critical component, um, and I think all too often it's overlooked, and all too often the people in those positions don't understand the importance of being a coach and sure. being a mentor. Sure. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to learn under under some great leaders in the Marine Corps, and, and granted, it's a different a different genre, but leadership is leadership, Absolutely. whether it's the Marines or it, or it's fifth graders on a lacrosse field. Right. Um, the the principles are the same. Uh, you know, and I started coaching. You know, first of all, I you know I I worked so hard to be the best D midi, and then they actually promoted me to long stick midi, and 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 and. You know, these guys were all mostly Annapolis graduates and guys that played at the college level. And and, and I just would not fail. Yeah, I actually <laughs> didn't even know that you were a D-Midi. But yeah, I, think, yeah. I think it's something to be said about uh, having to work a little bit harder. You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe you're seen as less skilled. Is that That's why they give you that. Or And I, I think, you know, I mean, I think it's involved. It, I think the game is... Uh, has evolved to where the D midi now is a specialized, tough, um, almost it's a very cerebral position Absolutely. now. I think when they gave it to me, it was because I had no stick skills, sure, sure. <laughs> and they were like, "You're gonna run, and you're gonna run and chase their best player." And 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 but I, back, I think it has a lot. I think a lot of guys in lacrosse would say that 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 has happened to multiple different positions. You know, there's a lot of talk on how necessary the FOGO is right now. And I think definitely being a D midi and, and seeing it all the way through, I, what position did I start off with, Coach? All oh, the way back to the you, day. You were, you were the first <laughs> assassin in the history of Mawa lacrosse. And to give uh, those that listening, uh, assassin was uh, somebody who played attack. And what did we have from there? We had, we had the, 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 uh, the defensemen were the Terminators and uh, the middies were the Warriors. Exactly. So you see that, that type of mentality um, for college greater than self, uh, going to warfare, uh, it was kind of an analogized into the sport of lacrosse. And uh, which takes me to my next question. Uh, many coaches have different philosophies. You know, we're talking about how you called uh, attack means assassins, and, and so on and so forth. What are some key components to an individual's character or a team's culture uh, that are non-negotiable in your eyes? Well, I think you have to, as a coach or as a mentor. You have to lay the foundation from day one, and it has to be non-negotiable in terms of integrity, honor, commitment, dedication, and 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 what I probably one of the most used phrases in my coaching vernacular was was the phrase "be the one," where where you're just trying to teach young men to be the one, be the one that works harder, that. That, that, that believes more, that has, that's the better teammate, that's the better son, that's the better uh, student, is be the one. Somebody has to be the best. Right. And if everybody believes that, so then you have a, 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 an individual belief on a team level, Definitely. then it becomes the team's belief. Absolutely. And, 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 and I, I often think back to um, the Mawa days, you know, you know, when you were a young man, a young boy, um, and, and building that program, you were the first high school lacrosse team in Mawa because you were the first fifth grade team, and then I just coached you all the way up to high school. Right. Um, and, and I spent the, those seven years, the story never changed. Never. never. And, and the message never changed. Right. And, 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 it was, and it wasn't, lacrosse is just a game that you teach young men had to live absolutely and and i think that's what we did and 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 to see you today you know as a member of team usa you know member of the san diego seals and the chaos and and the bayhawks and 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 all the things you've accomplished within the game playing at yale you know i sit here now and, and you've played the game at the highest level there is and i saw that from the beginning Appreciate that. And, and 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 you know I've coached in three different states and over the course of my thirty plus years, and I can safely say, without question, you were one of the hardest working 
student athletes I ever coached. I appreciate that, coach. And, and and it's not because we're on a podcast. It's it's true. Yeah. And and I think back to the days when you, as as a ninth grader, after a three and a half hour practice in the hail and the snow, would ask me, could I stay and feed you more balls so you could shoot? And 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 there wasn't a day we didn't do it. Right. And and your pursuit of excellence was well established by the time you were in ninth grade. And you used words before like honor and, and dedication and, and commitment, which we'll get to later. Uh, those things are, are not just throw around words, you know, that although they're, they're established early, they got to become part of the cloth of the, of the culture, right? And uh, you were always great at seeing when we were going off a little bit and, and you brought us back. And I think I've used lacrosse as my sport or my vehicle um, to do life very well, right? And everybody has their sport or everybody has sure. their vehicle, whether it is lacrosse or even if it's outside of athletics. Uh, but I think what you're trying to get to and you've got to very well is that no matter what you're doing, um, there has to be people that are willing to do uh, and be the one and separate themselves. And uh, what would you say are the separating factors, like the, the key separating factors between average, good, to yeah. great? Well, I think it's very simple. It, it really comes down to an individual commitment to excellence. And, and, and you know, I often use the words uh, tenacity and passion in, in describing what I'm looking for in young men and what I want them to, to, to enhance and to embrace. And you talk about passion and people think, oh, passion between a man and a woman and, and you know, the passion of Valentine's Day. That's not passion. That is passion, but another definition of passion is, is that, that burning desire to excel at your chosen craft. Right. You couple that with tenacity, which is a word, you know, I, I told you as, as a young man, if somebody calls you tenacious, it's perhaps the greatest compliment they could give you. Right. Because that means you will never settle for mediocrity. Regardless of, 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 of consequence and obstacle and difficulty, the constant pursuit of excellence. Yeah. I, I find that to be the biggest quality in successful people. Right. It, right. The willing, the, 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 you never settle for mediocrity in anything. Right. And I think uh, there's this quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Um, it says something like the, the stone that gets rejected becomes the cornerstone, right? So you not, may not believe or pick up what you're putting down, right? Even when you're a young kid, you don't, you don't know. You have all these different hormones and emotions and all that stuff, especially when I'm a fifth grader and you're, you're, you're talking about some serious things. You know, you might not always get it because there's a lot of distractions um, that go hand in hand. Uh, you talked about before uh, feeding me balls when I'm a ninth grader. Uh, I see that, and we talked about earlier how that was an inflection point in my life where you saw a snap in my eyes and we were like, I, you just saw a difference in my work ethic, whether we cranked up the volume or not. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that because I was very young, and could you talk about uh, stories in your life that were inflection points? Sure. Uh, you know, I mean, for me in particular, um, growing up uh, in the Bronx, there was, there was a pinch point, uh, and that's what I call them, um, where... The opportunity to run the streets presented itself as, as a way of life where I very easily could have chosen um, a different path, you know, the path of the streets and, and what that brings. Or listen to my parents and, and to, to be honest, there was a... a uh, a patrolman, an NYPD patrolman, who grabbed me one night when my friends and I were out and about in the streets, and I was probably 12 years old, and he grabbed me by the scruff of the neck, and he said, you keep doing what you're doing, and you're going to end up in a bad place. And, you know, I kind of took it to, to heart, and sure. I kind of walked home, and, and sure. I was like... I wonder what he meant. And then I kind of thought about it and, and I was like, you know what? You know, I need to, I need to get in the books and I need to, 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 to stay the course. Sure. Um, you know, but I think with you, it was, it was probably, I, you were a very athletic young man. Um, you know, you were, you were, uh, 
it wasn't hard for you to be the best at what you were doing when you were in middle school. Um, I remember, you know, I would be around town and I'd see you playing basketball or uh, lacrosse or football, and, and you were a natural athlete. Um, you know, I obviously was trying to, 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 to harness your lacrosse ability. Yeah. Um, but, but in ninth grade, and it was probably mid-season, and I remember it clear as day, um, we were at practice and, and you know, we, we had some epically long practices in, in Mawa. Definitely. And, uh, and, and, and I just saw, there was just a different gear you hit. It was just, it was, it was so easy for me to see. Um, and, and, and all of a sudden, you just kind of, you know, it was a switch. And I often talked about flipping the switch. Absolutely. And, and, and you decided to flip the switch. Absolutely. And you were a, and then you were just a machine. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. I think anybody who knows me today um, and is listening to this podcast is starting to see the similarities and, and where I'm kind of more of a, a, a microphone of, of what you've been teaching me all along. And that's why I wanted you to be on here first so that people understand uh, the environment that I was in really young, which was uh, hard nosed, but it was what it ne- what needed to be because I uh, I didn't drink throughout high school. Uh, that was a big reason because of you and because of my father. Uh, the next question, and I want to shed some light on it before you answer, uh, is do feelings matter? And to shed some light on why I'm asking that, I remember being a young player for you and, and you stating things like oxygen is free. And uh, if you die on this field, I promise I'll have it named after you. Uh, and there's nothing cool about being uh, able to drink the most at the party. And as funny as those things are to repeat right now, uh, you and my father were ma- major reasons why I didn't drink in high school. Uh, now, more than a decade later, I'm teaching and preaching how excellence demands a level of commitment uh, greater than one's feelings. So uh, could you answer that question about feelings? And we t- you talked about passion before, and there's, of yeah. course, a lot of feelings that go into that. But I, I, it's it's... You know, I, I think it's all part of, you know, the same narrative where, where as a coach, you're, you're trying to impress upon young people that you can't live in two worlds. And, 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 and I think, you know, somehow you have to decide what world you're going to live in. And if you're going to live in a world of excellence, then there are no days off right. and there are no uh, do-overs. Right. You know, you spend every day in pursuit Sure. Uh, of excellence, um, you know, I, you know, alcohol and drugs and cigarettes and, and any of the vices that are available to young people. I never drank either. I mean, you know, all throughout my law enforcement career and retirement parties and bachelor parties and weddings, I, I just found anything that alters your judgment can't be good because it's your judgment that makes you who you are. Sure. So I think. When we're talking about young people and, and, and you and, you know, your, um, your team, that Mawa team and, 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 and how that grew into what it was, where I was just trying to impress upon all of you that you can't live in two worlds. You can't be, you can't be at the keg party acting the fool and getting drunk and getting arrested and be this dedicated, squared away lacrosse player. Can't do it. And, and, and to choose... The risk to benefit analysis scenarios that 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 I always gave you. Where what's the benefit to what you're doing? If you're participating in something, what's the benefit? Sure. And what's the risk? Right. And 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 I know. I mean, I knew. Um, you know, there were several. You know, you can't save them all. I mean, I've had players quit on me, and players leave, sure. and players not believe because sure. they want to live in another world. Right. Um, you never did, and and and. And I think that is a segue into the other thing, which is the importance of leadership by example. And I think that's something that's lost today by, by coaches and mentors and teachers and instructors. I'm not going to ask a kid, a player, a student athlete to do something I haven't done myself. And, and you can remember this. Did you ever attend a practice where I wasn't standing at the front door when you got there? No. And standing at the front door when you left? Because it matters. It matters. It matters. And, and that's the thing is nowadays I see, you know, even with, you know, you know, obviously I see other coaches at the schools and other sports and you see that they're late, they don't show up, the assistant runs practice, you know, it's a free for all. 
you know, it, it matters. Yeah. And, 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 and I think, you know, leadership as a coach and as a mentor, if you don't walk the walk, then no one's going to listen. They're going to see right through you eventually. Absolutely. I think uh, my favorite quote right now, and it won't leave my head ever, is uh, you teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. And that's what you were you're talking about. If you're not going to be there, and I'm young and I'm looking for an example, uh, and then you talked about uh, leadership, about setting an example, and, and, and that's got to be consistent, right? There's... Uh, few words that could talk about a legendary person and, and you can't use the word consistent. They're just right. consistent. They're always there. And uh, Nick Saban, the Alabama football coach, says that mediocre people and peak performers don't get along. No. They don't get along. And why is that? Because uh, because of their routines, which takes me to my next question. Uh, what stayed the same for you and what's changed over the years? Do you have steadfast routines or is I, it... I, I can honestly I can honestly tell you um, I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to um, I've incorporated some better training uh, you know the Marine Corps boot camp approach um, you know uh, probably led to to, to some overuse injuries uh, sure. throughout my sure. my uh, coaching career but but I the only thing that's changed for me would be some of the um, the advent in, in in sports science and knowing now what's better for the for the student athletes gotcha. um, but but my message hasn't changed whatsoever <laughs> and because it's a it's it's a recipe for success and, and you're living proof of it and and I think you know these things that that we're talking about have been around forever yeah it you know, and then I often say, like, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. And and I think that's what it is. Right. If leadership was easy, everybody would do it. Sure. It's it, it's a burden. Yeah. Leadership is a, is a, is a burden. Definitely. It's a twenty four hour a day, three hundred sixty five day a year. No glory in it. No. no. And everyone's waiting for you to fail right. because you're a leader. Right. You know, you referenced why uh, mediocre people don't get along with 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 high achievers. They don't because. There's a jealousy, there's an insecurity, and then there's the, 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 the human nature element, which is, I'm not going to raise my game, but I'll pull yours down. Yeah. So now we're the same. Yeah. And, and I think that's the human element that people have forgotten exists. Right. There's very few people in your life that are going to turn around and say, oh, I want you to... I want you to to do way better than me and get promoted ahead of me and 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 have financial success more than me, that yeah. doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I think there uh, there's a there's a there's a fine line here because when I was getting certified as a fitness trainer and as a nutritionist, you're you're talking about balance with your portion control and eating, and then you're talking about how many sets and repetitions you're going to do and and what you're trying to build. Yeah, it matters in terms of a sports science to make sure you're on the extremes, right? If you don't do anything, you're going to get out of shape and momentum will take over. I always talk to everybody and I say momentum is the most powerful thing in this world. If you want to do something bad, it'll get worse real quick. And if you want to do something really good and stack those things, it can be great real quick. And you made a really good point because as much as I try to take that balance into consideration, there's always something that want, somebody that wants you to fail. And if you're gonna do that exact amount of numbers or sets or whatever it is, they're coming for you. They're coming for you in a big way. Um, conviction, that's yes. a word that comes to mind when I think of you. Uh, in my world, that's an yeah. endearing term. It's the yeah. same way tenacity is for you uh, because I think it's a necessary trait for influence. Uh, would you agree? Uh, if not, what are some words or mantras you'd use to describe yourself? Well, well, for me, I mean, conviction, I think, is, 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 is a phenomenal term. And, and I often used it, um, you know, with, with, with you guys, even on a lacrosse field, where I would say, you know, dodge with conviction and play with conviction. I remember where, that. Where it's, it's about, it's a belief and, 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 and a desire to do it to the best of your ability. And, and I think, you know, I've had strong convictions in, in terms of how I live my life. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, you know, integrity and, and, and honor and, and, and a belief in, in something greater. Um, you know, I mean, I, people ask me, oh, why do you coach? And, and, you know, I coach to give back because I've had so many people give to me. Um, maybe not athletically, like I wasn't blessed with, with great coaches 
coming up that 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 inspired me to to, to greatness or anything. Um, it's more you know some of uh, you know L- Lieutenant Colonel Shaver in the Marine Corps and uh, you know Officer Breen in the Police Academy. You know people I came across that that told me it's okay to be different and it's okay to want to be the best at something and 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 you know what do we do now and then you see so frequently now where everyone gets a trophy and 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 it, it's because we don't want to make anyone feel bad that they're not achieving well that's okay but don't hamper the people who want to achieve right. exactly. and, and 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 I think that's the new dilemma I think we have socially right and 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 you know for me you know obviously I, i'm a big believer in country and 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 order and family and and friends you know like i often people would say to me oh you know you don't have that many friends and, I, and i'm like because the people i choose to call friend that's something special right other everyone else is an, is an acquaintance <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 i don't group my friends with my acquaintances for sure and and I think, you know, um, you know, for you and, and watching you develop and, and, and from afar, you know, watching your college career and, 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 and I could see, you know, the conviction in, 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 in what you were doing. And and these are words that, that that, you know, it's it's how you live. Right. You know, right. but but it's how you live, but it's how you practice. Yeah. It's how you play. Yeah. Like, there really is no difference. Yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. How you do anything is how you do everything. It's how you live. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't be tenacious at practice and not tenacious, you know, at work. Right. You can't be passionate at home and not passionate at practice. No. It's not. It's once you throw that switch and you believe in these concepts, it's how you live. And it's contagious, right? It's there very, very contagious. And, and for those listening... Uh, it's coach's birthday, so yeah, I'm definitely definitely one of his friends. And he's spending his birthday uh, doing a podcast with me, so I appreciate it, coach. You can be doing anything with your time right now. And um, we talk about conviction, and I think that when I think of the term um, nowadays, everybody wants to have all these different options, right? What whether it's uh, the soda that you're choosing, whether it's the school that you're choosing to go to in college. Or what can I jump away from my job into something different? Uh, I don't necessarily think options are a good thing because it allows you to not have full conviction and there's always something you can fall back upon. So um, I think conviction is one of those main things that I like to see in my young athletes that are my clients and then uh, as my adult athletes as well. I want them to just be so gung-ho about whatever it is they're doing. As a long-term, co- uh, long-time coach, um, what are some things that you look for in an athlete? What are like those little um, details or uh, characteristics? I know you mentioned a lot of great terms, but if you had to be specific about a few, um, what would be a few? But just to, to address your, your, your commentary there, which I think is, is, is extremely um, uh, in astute, I think what happens with options is we're creating excuses because what happens is when you don't when it doesn't go your way you now then disguise your lack of conviction with a choice change you either find a way or find an excuse that's it right? right so it becomes oh we have so many options because the path i originally chose is too hard so now i will choose something else instead of stay in the course right. you know which comes me to, to another f- phrase of mine which is respect the process the the process of, of achieving your goals no goal is going to be reached overnight and 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 the process of pursuing that goal you have to respect that and in that process is going to be obstacles it's how you negotiate them that will separate you from everybody else and, and I think, you know, as, as, as a coach, looking at, at high school athletes, what you look for is, is, is without, you know, going back to things we discussed already, but you're really looking for that there has to be, I mean, at a certain level, there has to be athletic ability, right? You, know, you, can't, sure. you, know, you can't make lemonade out of a brick. <laughs> but, but, but if there's tenacity 
a willingness to learn. Because here's the other thing about leadership. One cannot lead until one has learned how to follow. Sure. So, so if you're at practice and you're evaluating young people, what you're looking for is the desire to learn, a tenacious approach to that learning, the conviction to that learning, and the passion to be the best at what you're teaching. Sure. So, so you give me those things, and, 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 and as you well know, there were players that played that started on that lacrosse team in Mawa that was an extremely competitive and successful team. Nobody ever would have thought those kids would have played varsity sport. No. But we took that, those characteristics, and got them to, to believe it. Yeah. And, and, and they were able to achieve far more than they ever would have. Right. And I think that's what, you know, everyone in their desire not to disparage mediocrity, they, they want to hold back those who want to achieve great things and say that they're 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 overworked and that they're, 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 they're too committed and they're they're one dimensional and no they're not they're, what they are is they're driven they have a passion to succeed don't don't water don't box them up and yeah. call them you know fanatics right, right. to make those who choose the easier path feel better yeah and and I think there's nothing wrong with teaching young people to excel. First of all, leadership, you start developing leadership as a, as, as a fifth grade attackman. That's when I started developing your leadership. And it is amazing because I, I don't... The, You've seen me grow up before puberty. You know, anybody who's listening to this and then seeing my name and listening to because they know who I am right now. Um, the reason why I wanted you to have as, as my first guest is because people have to understand what, what it took to be the one that you were talking about, right? And you've seen it up and down and all that. And you said stick to the process. I love that because you're absolutely right uh, that there were many of my teammates in high school who weren't doing it for the love of the cross, you know? And right. What, what were they doing it for? Because you made them believe in, in, in team, you know? And I think uh, regardless if it's a relationship outside of life, whether it's uh, a team uh, chasing a championship, uh, or whether it's an individual who's trying not to be a plastic bag in the wind, that, that idea of process can make you go far further than anything else because you're not going to always have the passion or the love for it. There's been times where I don't love lacrosse, you know, right. but you find a different reason to stay involved in it. And then why? Maybe it's just just because of the, of the process. Maybe no other reason. And, 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 and what it becomes is, you know, and, and I know you experience it because you, you couldn't be playing on Team USA and, and, and chaos and, and all the, this high-level lacrosse if you didn't have it. And, and that's that constant pursuit of excellence. It's hard to stay a world-class athlete. You have to be dedicated. You have to be passionate. You have to be committed. You have to be tenacious. The things we were, you were doing as a fifth grader. And, and I think that, that style of living, you can teach people. And although it's on a lacrosse field, it translates to everything. You talk about team and, and, and pursuing a championship. Wouldn't you want all your salesmen at work to be tenacious Absolutely. and passionate? Wouldn't you want your doctor to be passionate about being the best surgeon he could be? <laughs> like, these are things that, that, that anybody can apply to any facet of their life. You know, people often ask me and I say, you know, I wake up every morning to be the best husband, father, brother, son, coach, and friend why because it's how I live because that's all I know and 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 life is better lived with passion and 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 not to be a stick in a stream and 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 let life take you right I'm gonna control my own destiny definitely and 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 you know what that's more than than sitting down and saying I'm controlling my own destiny you need to to come up with a strategic plan to handle your your destiny yeah. and 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 you know what if more people took charge that way and it's not easy it goes back to you know choices then oh 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 I didn't get promoted at work I'm gonna now change you know my job you know now now I made a, a different choice Jeez. you know and 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 oh 
oh, I had a, a, a disagreement with my uh, significant other, my partner. I'm just going to change. I'm going to get a new one. Right. And, and you, that's no. just, just not how it is, yeah. you know. And, and I think knowing you and, and, and being the, the, the fervent leader that you are and, and, and pursuit of leadership and, it, and its traits and, it, and, it's, and, it, and, and what it is, I think we, 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 we have somehow watered down the importance of leadership by example. And, you know, you can tell young people at a very early age that it's good to be different. And, and you know what? You don't have to go to the keg party and you don't have to smoke pot and you don't have to go create criminal mischief at night and you don't have to, you know, disobey your parents and you don't have to be the class clown. It's cool to get A's in school and and you know what it, it it's good to be different right. and 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 i think the earlier you instill these things you know people talk about you know you can't make good decisions till till you're in your mid-20s and your brain the frontal lobe of your brain hasn't melanated until <laughs> you know you're, you're 26 and 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 you know what that's all good data and the neuroscientists that come up with it i believe that you get to people at a very young age and you, you make them believe in themselves and what they can achieve and that nothing is going to be given to them. No. Nothing. No. That, you know, you can only go so far on things being given to right. you. There's going to come a time you're going to have to earn it. And I, I think it's because they can't taste the cookie right now, you know, and you almost sure. have to. You almost have to love the pain a little bit, you know, because I went through a lot of a lot of pain in high school, whether it was physical injury, uh, my mom getting sick. It doesn't matter. You you, you fight through that pain, and uh, there's, it's funny that I bring up neuroscience because Stephen Collar, the guy who's uh, at the head of the state of flow right now, or, or an athlete being in the state of flow and in the in, in the zone, he talks about uh, playing with pain as a learned skill, right? And and nowadays. Um, when everybody's being shied away from it, uh, you don't even see the one-to-one -one correlation between the input of pain and the output just because people are getting coddled away from it. And uh, it's funny, when I was getting into this and getting into leadership, I said, why, why do I want to do this? And it was the same answer uh, that you gave me before when I said, why do you want to be the best uh, uh, father and, and, and husband? It's because it's all you know, right? And, and uh, I don't think that... That comes overnight. It takes a lot of ups and downs. It takes a lot of positives. And I can say right now, uh, you are not just this uh, always intense, want the best. You, you know how to joke and all that stuff. And it doesn't mean you can't have a personality. But it's when you, what coach means um, by how to live is you, you reach this level of discipline, um, which turns into desire over time because it's all you know and then the cookies start to come, right? The cookie that you can't have right now because you, you can't see why, why it's important to do another set or to be different, uh, that comes down the road. That comes down the road. And, and, and I think, you know, it, it, the perfect analogy is your high school lacrosse career. You were in a startup program that, that you know, our first varsity season, you were all freshmen. Um, and, 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 you know, we played varsity lacrosse with an all freshman team. And, 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 and some of it wasn't pleasant for us. And, and, and we were playing established programs, you know, with seniors. There's a big difference between an 18 year old lacrosse player and, and a 15 year old lacrosse player. Sure. And, and, and I remember in the locker room talking, you know, to the team and to you and, 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 and the other members of the team about the process and that we have to endure this and overcome it to reach our ultimate goal, right. which was success on the field and success in the classroom. And, 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 and I mean, you talk about, you know, the GPA of, of, of that Mawa lacrosse team was off the chart. And, and it wasn't by accident. You know, it's because everybody was on the same page. And why do you think we believed you? What, what, what do you think the reason is? I, I mean, I think, you know, I think leadership by example had a lot to do with it, and I think that has a lot to do with my success as a coach, is, is I'm consistent, and it's every day. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? The lessons that I talk about 
we eventually get to a point where you see, you know, what you're referring to, the cookie. Right. So, so the key to it is to set these goals and have people reach them and say, oh, my God, like, we got that. Like, it, he was right. Like, you know, I mean, I'm sure, like, you know, over the years, man, you go, yeah, coach, we didn't know then, but you were right. Right. And, and, and that's it, where you have this, this incremental ladder of achievement, and, 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 you, and you can see that the message and the way you're living will pay off. Um, and, 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 I mean, you know, there was a couple of times, you know, we got a pretty good beating you know, and, and, and I would have, you guys would be, because you were such competitors and we worked so hard where you take a bunch of 15, 16 year old young men who practiced four hours a day, you know, for, for three weeks and you play this game and you lose by 15. To keep them, to keep you in on the path and on the ladder. So hard. It's so hard, but, but that's what it is. But then when you keep the message the same, you guys, we, there wasn't a bus ride we took, win, lose, or draw, that we weren't happy as a team. Absolutely. Because no matter what happened, we knew it was up another rung on the ladder. Process, not results-oriented. Did the go. win matter? No, it didn't. That, it didn't. And, and it was about learning how to t- come over these obstacles. And, and you know what? When, when you see the guys in the offseason running hills and, and, and wall ball and, 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 you know, guys, you know, playing out of season and, 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 and really just and avoiding socially. What were the, you know, we talked about the, the Trident. You know, when I first started coaching you guys, I said it's a Trident. It's academic achievement, athletic accomplishment, and social responsibility. Those are the three prongs of the message and 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 you guys believed it right. and 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 every day you spent in the classroom you're working on the prong uh, academic yeah. you know achievement then we came to practice and you worked on athletic accomplishment right. then practice ended and you worked on social responsibility right you know you referenced it earlier you can have the best personality you can have fun laugh go on trips have a girlfriend be the be the most popular kid in the school, and never ever have to deviate from that trident. It's true, very true. Not easy, but you can do it. Very difficult. I, I was over teaching uh, this world across in, in in Japan, and they had a term called kaizen, which means the the constant uh, need for incremental improvement, which I love because if that becomes your goal, then how can you lose, right? And uh, I'm reading the book, uh, getting to us. Uh, by Seth Davis, who's looked at coaches all throughout uh, the ranks, whether it's uh, Coach K at Duke or Urban Meyer and all these other great coaches. And um, he says a coach is summarized in peak, persistent, empathetic, authentic, and knowledgeable. And I want to stay on that third one for a second and talk about that of authenticity because you talk, you said a term and I wrote it down right now is because you're consistent and it's every day. And I think the reason why uh, the group of us years ago believed in the process, in you, in what we were doing there, uh, regardless of the knowledge of the sport, it really had nothing to we, that learning was going to come along the way, whether it was any part of that trident. But I think, I think we really believed in you because of the authenticity about what we were doing, right? Uh, whether it was us shaving our heads completely bald. Right and 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 on game day and being in in a suit and tie and yeah. everybody looking what is with that lacrosse team what are they doing and why are they doing that That's they're right. losing by fifteen why are they still doing it? it had nothing to do with that it had everything to do with getting to peak and being persistent like you empathetic like you but never ever losing that authenticity and, and making sure that was at the core of what we were doing yep yeah. and, and 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 you know you do those things um, you know because it's part of building a culture. You know, where, you know, we were different. And, and, and what I was trying to, 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 to prove, you know, with the, with the shirt and tie and the shaving of the heads and, 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 and practicing longer than, I mean, we started practice <laughs> before anybody else and, yeah. and, and finished long after them. Really? You know, I remember talking to your, your parents in particular. <laughs> they said, well, what time is practice going to end? And I, you know, practice started at six and I said nine-ish. And, and I said, the best you can do is, you know, just wait in the parking lot and we'll be up eventually. Sure. Practice will end when I think we accomplished what we needed. And what was the reason for that? Why, why long? Why so long? And, 
And what do you have to say to the people that say, uh, the practices are too long, how will you ever do your academics? That's, number one, we had set it up that we practiced at night and you got to go home and do your homework prior to practice. <laughs> Um, and, and if you recall, it, it wasn't the, the, the idea wasn't to keep you, I mean, you can speak to this. How many times did we have a three and a half, four hour practice and, and you didn't want it to end? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true. And, and, and I think when you have people pursuing a goal, they, they can't help but, 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 in, but enjoy it. So, so as hard as we were working... The level of, of enjoyment, you know, like we used to always say, you know, if you want to have fun, go to Disney World. You know, this is practice. Yeah. But we never, like, our practices were intense and enjoyable. And, and I think that's a, 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 a credit to, to everyone believing in the message. Right. Because if you have one person not believing... Then he's in the line doing a drill, and he's just not into it, sure. and, and it spreads like cancer. It does. It does. We never it. had that. I mean, there was times I called practice after four hours, and, and you guys were mad, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and you still wanted to stay after and shoot a bucket of balls. Sure. So I think, you know, I think what that speaks to is, is, is that you know what, like to to to, to make a general statement, you know, like. Nowadays, they talk about every practice should be scripted and every, the parent should get a, 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 a basically a go-by for every day what you're doing. Sure. And I, You never saw me with a script. No. We practiced what we needed to do to get better. Right. And, 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 and sometimes if, if, if we weren't getting a certain skill, we would do it longer. Right. And, 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 and you know what? Everybody got better. <laughs> Right. And, and, and the parents, they survived it. Right. And, and, and after the first year, they realized this is the way it is. But you know what? My son loves it. Right. Because you, you don't have to coddle people all the time. Right. It's okay to practice in the hail and in the snow. <laughs> and, you know, nobody dies. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you, regardless if we were working on offense or defense, we were, the staple was conditioning, right? right. No matter what. And, and no matter what. And if that, you walk, we run. Right, exactly. And, right. And, and, and these are things, you know what, you know, you're not a Neanderthal, you know, taskmaster by demanding people to put effort in. Sure. You know, you can have you can have that, and I think what's happened is culturally, that's now become almost taboo. Like you can't push someone to excel; right. they have to want to excel. Mm. Everybody wants to excel. Very few people are born and they want to be a failure. Mm. It's the amount of work they're willing to put, willing in. To put in. So. Uh... Question, and this might be hard for you to answer. You being a, a student of coaching, if we were to use that term, mm -hmm. uh, what is something you know now as a coach that you maybe didn't know then, whether it was you as a young coach or yep. whoever you want? I, I mean, I would say very, I can answer that Pretty very quickly. quickly. Yeah. Um, early in my career, I was very demonstrative, mm. um, verbally and, and otherwise in games. And well, I think, where did I come from? That just came from a passion to win. Yeah, yes, or? yes, and I think you know uh, uh, an immaturity as a coach, mm. and and where I couldn't, I didn't understand the importance of of of, of consistency. Right. Um, where I couldn't preach for you to be a certain way, and then come game day, you know, I'm getting unglued on the sideline. Yeah, but what do you think about Bobby Knight throwing the chair and stuff like that? There's a there's a we're getting teed up for your player. Yeah, now I've caught a couple of bench penalties, and, and, and there's actually a famous story. Um, when I went to Michigan and I started the, the program in Dexter, um, I pulled our goalie and I put a traffic cone in. And I just said, and, and the referee didn't know what to do. He's That's like, an equivalent just, of right, picking up first base right, and throwing right. first base. He was like, you, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, I can. I can play without a goalie. Why'd you do that? You did that because you... my goalie was, was he, he was like a sieve. And oh, he so wasn't you're, you're focused. A yeah, I was like, I'll play with a good. I'll. Yeah. I only had fourteen kids on the team. Did the traffic come out of a save? Or? It did actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? The switch flipped on that goalie, and never again did he have this 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 lack of effort in pregame and and sure. and the practices leading up. Sure. He went on to become an all county goalie. Sure. And and he can stand there and say, yeah, one time the 
the coach pulled me and put a cone in. And I, I think, put the box cone. I think in. having that, I, although that's a very funny story, that compared to what mentality? Oh, compared to a traffic cone, you know? And it, and, and whether or not he wanted to look at it that way, um, a traffic cone could do it, your job as well as you're doing it right now. And I think that compared to what mentality can take you much further, that, regardless of right. we're talking about and, lacrosse. And, and that's what I mean. And, 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 and he didn't have mental illness from it, and he didn't go home and, 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 and you know, kick his dog. I talked to him after the game, and 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 yeah, he was embarrassed. Sure. And 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 you know, in retrospect, I mean, I did it willingly and knowingly, um, you know. But but I knew for him, that's what it would take for me to get that switch thrown. And I want to stay there for a second because uh, I'm a firm believer in, in the importance of mental health. And you would have not done that unless you knew that he would have taken the message the right way. And that comes with a, a level of, of understanding and being around the individual enough to know what they can take, whether it be uh, negative punishment or positive reinforcement. Because you don't deliver the message until the student's kind of ready. That's right? it, and that's, and that's 100% correct. And, 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 that's, and that's what good coaches, good mentors, good teachers have, is they spend that time understanding their, their, their student athletes. And, and there's, you don't treat everybody the same. No. You treat the team the same, right. but then individually there are different things. Sure. You as a young player, you, you and I had countless end of practice, one-on-one conversations good bad you, were they good they or? were they were great you wanted to know how to be the best attackman in the world and 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 sometimes you know it'd be pouring rain we had a three and a half hour practice and i'm still out there with you because you wanted to know what's the dodge if they if, if, if they overplay me to the top side coach you keep telling me get to the middle right. you know and 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 that just desire to to get better so i knew with you I could be very forceful and, and, and just say, Mr. Glassini, you need to do this. Right. And you reacted to that right. v- very well. There were other players on the team. It was much more subtle, and it was much more, I don't know, deliberate, I guess, or right. not to, so much to the point. Right. Um, well, they talk about in coaching, you got to uh, punish the crowd and praise the individual. Exactly. That's a that's an omnipotent coaching style. Yes. But, uh, the Boys in the Boat, my favorite book that I've ever read. Uh, my 93-year-old grandfather says it's a top three book that he's ever read, and he's read thousands. It talks about uh, 1936 uh, Olympics when uh, the boys from Washington went over there as a collegiate uh, crew and and. and went into Nazi Germany and, and won Olympic gold. But what, it, what I'm trying to get to is they talked about the different personalities on that boat, right? And every single team, whether it's in the workplace, uh, every, every culture has this mixed bag of personalities and you know what uh, is good for one person might not be good for another. Right, but, and, and, and that's 100% accurate. But I would, I would bring up another point to that is that you can build a culture that is that has a single purpose and mix all these personalities. I mean, if you go back and, and you use uh, the your Mawa teams as an example, that team was built of five different friend groups. There were kids on that team that socially you would never hang out with because you just wouldn't. <laughs> Not It wasn't bad, you just wouldn't. And yet, I loved them all, though. That, I'm saying that's my point. But when it came to to the lacrosse team, everybody stuck together. Oh, yeah. And and you know what? It, like we say all the time, like you know, you don't have to invite me over for Christmas. Like, no. but but we're we're a team. That's definitely true. And and I think you know you look at that and you can build that in any environment, right. whether it's it, it it's corporate, whether it's military, whether it's 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 athletic. Sure. Think about it. You know, I often talked about, you know, why the Marines are the smallest of, 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 of the armed forces. Because we operate in small, close-knit, effective groups. Right. Take that mentality to everything you do, everything right? You do. Whether it's your sales team, your, you know, your, your athletic team, your medical team, whatever it is. Right. It's the same. The, the principles are the same. Well, the quote that's timeless, that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. 
it's not you are the average of the 50, right? right. It, it's, you got to be selective with your crew because I, I firmly believe this and I don't want to go off on too big of a tangent about it, but your environment might be everything. Once you're old enough, your environment might be everything. And if the easiest way to change your life or, or improve it, right? Because improvement isn't inevitable, change is. But if you want to improve, you start hanging out with the right people and people that want to go. That's, well, I should say common, common, common minds, common goals. Right. And, and, and you surround yourself with people who believe what you believe, then, then believing is easy. Absolutely. And then, and then what you do is you pick each other up. Which happened on this, you know, and uh, you know, and on the Mawa team, countless times where somebody was down, the rest of the team picked them up because it was the common, common minds, common goal. Right. And 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 you may not have been common socially, you know, but you were common on that field and on that t- in that team. Right. And 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 you looked out for one another. And again, it goes to lacrosse is just an easel to teach life. That I mean, what we're talking about here and what we've been talking about this entire time is what you do does not matter. How you do it and why you do it matters. That's what leadership is. Because is. if you're going to do something, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's how you do it you know, and, and why you do it. And, you'll, you know, and leadership, if leadership was easy, like we said, everybody would do it. And if leadership was 100% accurate every time, then then we'd call them rights not decisions <laughs> right so so if in that role as a leader you make decisions based upon knowledge education and the welfare of those involved mm-hmm. then you did the best you could like if you encompass that into your decision making if somebody asked you why'd you make that decision because there were consequences you can articulate i did it a b and c now, had I known this would have happened, then obviously I wouldn't have made that decision. Right. But that's what leaders do. You can't, if every decision you make is right, then they call them rights. Right. And, so really and, it goes back to the conviction like we were talking right. about before. And, 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 and if you, if, as a leader, you take that burden on and, you, and every time you go to lead, you consider those factors, you know, knowledge, education, um, training and experience and the welfare of those involved, then that's a that's a decision you made as a leader. Mm. And you can articulate and support it. Right. You know? One of my questions for you is when I say the word training, what do you think of? Training. Uh, practice. And, and what type of practice? Intense. Um, you know, my, my, my thing with practice is, you, you heard it, you know, probably... 10,000 times as a young man. If you want to have fun, go to Disney World. Right. You know, practice, we're here for a purpose. Right. And, and your entertainment is not the purpose. Right. Now, it's a gift and a skill to have people work really, really hard at perfecting something and enjoy it at the same time. Definitely. That's hard. It's, that's it's right. very hard. It's very hard. But it can be done. It can be definitely done. And, and, and I think that's the key to, to successful coaches and 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 it's no different in the classroom right you you know you you education at the highest level going to an ivy league school and and you've had countless educators there's good educators and bad educators right you go to a class it may be math and you can't stand math but the teacher is phenomenal right and 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 so then you embrace the present right to guarantee your future definitely every one of those teachers that you're talking about believed in what they were saying so much that it like you, you couldn't you can't be, help but you, learn. You couldn't help but you learn. couldn't help you know and you're like what did what did he or she have for breakfast? Why are they acting like that? And why are they consistently acting like that? Because it's passion. And I say uh, to every single person that I work with, if you don't have uh, an importance and an intention and an intensity, those three eyes when you're training you're not going to be able to perform. Simone Biles, a four-time gold medalist in Olympian gymnastics, does pressure sets, right? And there's consequences when you don't perform in practice because if you want fun to go go to Disney World. My last question for you, Coach, is uh, how would you define greatness? I, I think greatness is, 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 I would go back to the process. I would say greatness is, you know, at the end of the day, you put your head on the pillow and you say, did I do everything I could today to reach my goals? Right. 
and and you know greatness is going to be different for everybody um you know um because people are going to have a ceiling and and unrealistic goals don't help anybody no. you know i think the key to greatness is is that you you take that journey from the beginning in pursuit of of of, of your goal and if you give that a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time then you've achieved greatness and and, and i think I think being being a passionate, tenacious, considerate, you know, we could add in, you know, honorable person in pursuit of whatever goal you've set for yourself is the definition of greatness. Right. And it's not necessarily that white moment. That no, there's no one day. That beautiful bubble. Listen, you know, you put on the, you knock the guy out and you get the belt. That's greatness. No, that's a win. That's a win. Right. You know, and maybe you gotta be the able guy, to separate that's the results, right. the wins, the losses, the outcomes from, from the process. Maybe the guy he got knocked out came from nothing and worked his way all the way up to a prize fight. Right. And he respected the process and right. he came a lot further because he was in pursuit of that belt right. than he ever would have. Right. Is that not greatness as well? Yeah. That is. Well, Coach, this, this is, is called uh, Grateful and Full of Greatness for a reason. I'm really grateful for you, as you know, um, but I want to make that public on here as well. And um, you're not only full of greatness as a coach, but you're full of greatness as a person. Um, I look, I've always looked up to you. I still look up to you. Um, you'll be a lifelong friend. Thank you for spending your birthday with me to do this. Um, really appreciate you. My pleasure. And, and, and like I said, the reason I coach, I can sum up in, in – you know, very quickly. It, it's for moments like this, and and to see, to remember you as a as a as a as a as a young man, and 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 having the 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 honor and privilege of watching you respect the process and 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 achieve great things is 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 solely the reason why I coach, and it, a pleasure and a privilege. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, coach.